As with any type of system, uh, data protection and backup is a critical component of your Azure cloud services. Now, Azure Backup and Restore is managed through, they call them recovery, or re, yeah, recovery Services Vaults. So I'm going to go ahead and search for recovery. It's, interestingly enough, it's not here in your default options, but we can search for Recovery Services Vaults. Or if you've opened it recently, as in most things, it'll show up here in your uh, recent Azure services. Now I have one that's already been manually created for me, but let's walk through the process of creating a recovery services vault, just in case you don't have one or you want to add one somewhere else. In general, you want your recovery services vault to be located in the same region as your resources that they're backing up. That's just gonna simplify everybody's life. And at some points, Azure actually has not allowed you to create a recovery services vault that exists outside of that uh, region. We'll get back to that in a minute. So we're going to create a recovery services vault, and I'm going to put this in my resource group, and I'm going to choose my demonstrations from my resources group, and I'm going to give it a name, and I'm going to call this demo recovery vault, and that'll work and region US West too. So our next step takes us to redundancy, and this is where we get to that within the same region thing. So your backup storage redundancy by default is geo-redundant. So I'm going to set that back to locally redundant. That's actually going to save me money, and since this is a demo, I can make this geo-redundant, which gives me redundancy in different regions or zone redundant or locally redundant. And this will be the most expensive option. It's also the safest option. So I'm going to go locally redundant because this is a demo thing and I want to save some of my credit. So my next page has to do with my encryption. Now, if I let Microsoft manage encryption, that means I don't have the encryption keys and everything is just managed automatically. Data should be encrypted when it's stored in the vault. So that's going to help protect it just in case the vault ever gets compromised. If I want a little more control, I can use a customer managed key in which case I would have to select a key from the key vault or specify a, a URI for the key. And I'm not gonna do all of that. I'm gonna use a Microsoft managed key for this. Click next, go to my properties. This has to do with enabling immutability. Uh, that actually can be changed a little bit later on if we want. So I'm gonna skip that. And then connectivity, do I wanna allow public access for all networks or this will allow me to deny public access and allows me to create a private endpoint. So that would restrict access to whatever can access that private endpoint IP address. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it publicly accessed from everything. And next, no tags that I need. Oops, don't want feedback. And then I'm going to review and create. If everything passes, I should be able to hit create, and this will create my recovery services vault. So now that this is deploying, uh, once we get it created, and we're still in process here, once we get it created, then we can go look at some of the properties. In fact, since I already have one, while we're waiting for this to create, I'm gonna go ahead and go home, and then I'm gonna to go to my recovery services vaults. Hey, look at that, it finished. Almost finished, it's still deploying it. So that's fine. So we'll look at this one that's already been created for me. So what type it is, whether immutability is enabled or disabled, resource group, what location. And you'll notice I can have multiple recovery vaults per resource group. I don't need to, but I could. So I'm gonna go into my existing vault. This enables me to add a backup. So here I can try to back up information. We'll look at that in another video here in a few minutes. We can enable site recovery, delete the vault. Here's where we can access our settings, including our networking. So allow from public access, uh, allow from all networks or not for both public access and private access. We can look at our properties including backup configuration, smart timing. We can set, do a backup or a site recovery. Here under manage, we can set backup policies, backup infrastructure, and then under monitoring, we can monitor our alerts, our metrics, diagnostic settings. 
Let's come back up here and look at our backup reports. And this will give us some reports once we actually have backups to work with. Okay, so that's how we're going to create and manage a recovery services vault. Now, in our next video, we'll look at doing a little more work with a recovery services vault.